Hi everyone, I'm Jorge Trincado from the development team of Thinker.io platform. And today I'm going to show you how to integrate the Things Stack version 3 Community Edition with Thinker.io by means of our new integration plugin that provides us with some interesting features such as device auto-provision, uplink and downlink real-time data processing. And to make that, we are going to implement a simple air quality device using a BME680 and an Arduino MQR Loro One device. So if you are ready, let's start. But first of all, we are going to take a brief introduction to Thinger.io, which is an open source platform specifically created to streamline the development of IoT products and multi-tenancy projects with no code or low code orientation that allows to reduce time to market and increase the efficiency of the development team. This platform is hardware agnostic, so it allows to retrieve data from any kind of connected device, no matter if there are Linux-based, Arduino, MQTT, HTTP, or even low-power solutions. Being able to store, analyze, and display device data over customizable dashboards and to create email alerts over geofence or real-time device data. Moreover, all these tools have been created to be as flexible as possible in order to adapt the platform to many different use cases in a very simple way. Also, allowing an scalable management of the projects thanks to our web console, which is completely revendable with the customer logotypes, colors, and web domain, as we will see in the next steps to integrate the air quality device. As I told, we are going to use an Arduino MQR 1300 and a BME680 sensor that provides a lot of interesting data such as temperature, humidity, CO2, and VOC values. So we can obtain useful data about the air quality of this room. As you can see, the codification is quite simple. We just have to retrieve each variable and store it in a binary buffer that will be sent through the TTN infrastructure. We have also included on this device an air quality alert function that can be configured using a downlink process to send a new threshold value to the device. So let's start with the configuration. First step is going to Thinker.io marketplace in which we can find multiple complements to extend the platform features. For example, with Node-RED Rule Engine or Visual Studio Code to work with device code online. In this situation, we are going to install and deploy the new TTN stack plugin to allow our server to work with TTN stack's webhooks data format. As you can see, a new feature has appeared in the main menu. So now we can access to the plugin and create a new configuration by placing here the same application ID that was set in the TTN console. Note also that we can create more than one profile in order to retrieve data from different applications. Now going to the second tab, we can configure the auto-provisioning tool that will create devices and data buckets with the prefix we place here. My device is sending data each 60 seconds, so I'm going to place here a two minutes uh, timeout, so it will appear as disconnected if there is no new data after that interval. Could be interesting to use the geolocation also, and I'm going to initialize the value of the alert threshold that we will be able to custom later using the downlink process. To make this, we are going to enable it with a normal priority. Now we are going to move to the most interesting tab, which is the payload processing one, that allow us to place a Node.js script to decodificate the payload of the message and use the format we prefer to be stored in our data bucket. Finally, the webhook setting tab will provide us all the useful information we will need to make the final configuration in TTN console. So let's go to TTN stack console 
and accessing to the air quality application, I'm going to make two configurations. First of all, to enable the downlink processes, I'm going to create an API key to be introduced in my device. Uh, I'm going to provide it with all permissions. And uh, taking it into the clipboard, we are ready to go to the webhooks section and finally set up the integration with Thinker.io. Well, it will very soon, but currently there is not an official integration profile. So we have to select the standard webhook slot and note that we just have to paste here all the information that we have created before. The AP key from TTN application, then the endpoint from Thinker.io, the authorization, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Note that I'm copying the beer space too. Okay. And finally, the uplink path. Great. So now saving the configuration, we can go to thinger.io and wait through the device to send the first stream. As soon as this happened, a new profile will be created in my device list and we will be able to continue working. Here it is. And as you can see, it has some information retrieved from the plugins parameter, such as the IUI, the downlink URL, and also the value of the default threshold that can be modified in order to change the device alert configuration. Going to the data bucket section, we can take a look to the data that has been stored since we made the integration, such as the temperature, the air quality, or the CO2 concentration. But the most interesting part of this is going to the dashboard section and show this data in graphical widgets that, as you can see, are very simple to configure using forms and drag and drop technology. So in a few minutes, we can end our solution to monitor the air quality and also share the results with other user accounts by means of our project manager or using a direct link. To end with this project, I'm going to test the downlink integration that will allow us to send data from the cloud to the device. With that proposal, I have created this slider. Note that when I slide it, I'm changing the value of the EAQ threshold property of the device. And this is triggering the downlink process to be retrieved by TTN stack and sent to the device when it begins connected. Best way to check if this is working is by going to the data buckets and check if the EAQ threshold has changed. So far, so good. We have the bidirectional communication. Yeah, and that is pretty much all. I really hope you find this explanation useful. But if you have any doubt, remember that there is a documentation available at docs.thinger.io slash plugins slash the things stack. And if you want to perform a free test of our platform, you can go to console.thinger.io. Have a nice day.